Every NBA season, we see records broken, and this year's no different. We've got money-related records, career records, rookie records, both positive and negative, players beating Michael Jordan's records, all of which we're about to get into, so this should be fun. If you guys like the content, you should probably be subscribed. Let's shoot for 420.69 likes on today's video, and let's get into this. Today, we've got a returning sponsor, Prize Picks, which, man, have I really been enjoying. Some of you guys have already shared your picks with me, and I've had a lot of fun playing along with some of my friends. It's a player prop site that is legal in most US states. It's really simple. They give you a bunch of lines for certain players, such as points, rebounds, assists, and you decide whether you want the over or under, and you can get up to 10 times your entry. For example, tonight I wanted to do something fun. I took the points for three of the top rookies so far, Jalen Green, Scotty Barnes, and Franz Wagner. I took the over on all of them, and if that hits, I'm gonna get five times my entry. It's truly a lot of fun, and if you guys wanna play along, click the link in the description, use code Jimmer, and they're gonna give you a deposit match up to $100. They also have a lot of awesome promos going on for Thanksgiving and Black Friday, such as Josh Allen's passing yards being set to just 0.5. So it's a pretty good time to get in if you guys haven't already. Thank you, PrizePix, for sponsoring today's video. Let's start with some small records and work our way up, beginning with Patty Mills. I thought this was an overlooked signing this offseason. I thought it was a huge addition for the Nets. This is a guy that for basically the past decade has been a 40% three-point shooter, hovering around five attempts a game, most of which come off the dribble. He's not the most prolific playmaker, but that shouldn't be a problem with Harden on this team. He's a reliable ball handler, allowing him to seamlessly fit to really any role in this roster, which I think we know is a big deal, given the situation with Kyrie and all the injuries they dealt with last season. So far this year, he's on fire, averaging 12 points, shooting 49% from three on over six attempts a game. He holds a decent amount of three-point related records from his time in San Antonio, but to start this season, he added to his record resume. In the very first game of the season, he made seven threes, tying the NBA record for the most threes in a player's team debut, which was impressive, but possibly more impressive is that he only took seven threes. His perfect streak continued into the next game when he went three for three from the perimeter, making him the first player to make their first 10 three-point attempts in the first two games of the season. What's really funny is the last player to come close to doing this was him in 2013 when he made his first eight three-pointers across the first two games of the season. The next couple records we've got are some money-related records, and as you probably know, the NBA is just getting bigger and bigger, and with that comes a lot of money. LeBron James took home the record this season for the most money earned in a year all time by an active player. He is set to earn roughly $112 million this season, $41 million from his contract, $32 million from Nike, and the rest coming from various other sponsorships and his appearance in Space Jam 2. There is not a single other player in the 100 million club. The next closest is Curry at around 90 million, and James is just the 10th athlete to ever hit this mark in a single year, joining guys like Messi, Ronaldo, Floyd Mayweather, and Dak Prescott. That one's a little confusing. I guess Campbell's soup really pays. We also have the record sale for an NBA sneaker when Michael Jordan's game-worn pair of Nike airships sold for a whopping $1.472 million. I can't even imagine dishing out that kind of money for a pair of shoes, but we don't judge. We're also seeing team valuation skyrocket. The NBA is hitting all-time highs in sponsorship money, and they've got a new broadcast deal coming up, expected to be in the ballpark of $75 billion. This is now the first time that three teams have hit the valuation of over $5 billion. The Knicks are at $5.8 billion. The Lakers are at $5.5 billion. But that's not even the number two spot. I guess all the bandwagons from 2016 have stuck around. The Warriors are now worth $5.6 billion. Absolutely insane. Getting back to some on-court records, we just recently had the most broken tackles and stiff arms in one game held by the second coming of Derrick Henry, Isaiah Stewart. But all jokes aside, his star rookie teammate, the number one pick in the recent draft, Cade Cunningham, has been involved in a couple records so far. Some good, and some not so much. It was funny to see all the Pistons fans rushing to make content about how Cade Cunningham's debut wasn't as bad as you think. The number one pick shot one for eight from the field. Let's not overthink this. Now I'm extremely bullish on Cade Cunningham. I am confident he's gonna have an amazing career, but you're just being ignorant to suggest that it's been an impressive start. He missed the first couple games with injury. We heard a lot of rumors in the off season that his jump shot was getting tweaked. That started to give me haunting flashbacks to 2017. I was holding my breath for his debut. He came into the season as the odds on favor to win Rookie of the Year, and in his 12 games so far, he's averaged 13 points, 5 assists, and 6 rebounds, shooting an impressively bad 34% from the field and 24% from three. 
He's obviously gone way down in Rookie of the Year odds. Somehow, the number one pick in the draft now holds the record for the worst start to a career, shooting less than 18% from the field in his first three games of the season. But again, I don't think we have a Markel Fultz case on our hands. I truly think Cade Cunningham is a special talent. My thoughts on him really haven't changed much going into the draft compared to right now. We've seen some good flashes. He now holds a pretty positive record, beating out LeBron James. In a game against the Kings, he went off for 25 points, 8 assists, and 8 rebounds, shooting 10 for 20 from the field and 5 for 11 from 3. He became the youngest player with at least 25 8 and 8 to go along with 5 threes, besting out LeBron James by 49 days, and guys like Luka Doncic and Trey Young by over 100 days. Sure, it's kind of a cherry pick, but I have a pretty strong feeling this is not going to be his last record of the season. Then we've got a pretty funny one. Michael Jeffrey Jordan, known as one of the greatest players of all time and undoubtedly the best player to ever put on a Bulls uniform, has had one of his records broken by a newcomer to the Bulls, DeMar DeRozan. We've talked about DeRozan a lot this season, but how could we not? He's 32 years old, a part of a big free agency class in Chicago, a team that currently sits with one of the best records in the Eastern Conference, and he's on pace for the best season of his career. He's averaging 26-5-4, shooting 49% from the field and 36% from three. This is coming after four seasons, averaging less than 23 points a game. The record he stole from Jordan is that he now has the most points in the first 16 games as a Chicago Bull. In the 1985 season, Jordan managed to rack up a measly 424 points in that time. DeRozan has shattered that with 425. Now to Jordan's credit, he was just a rookie, and DeMar's been in the league for over a decade now, but I don't think it's an overreaction to say that DeMar is the best bull of all time. That seems pretty fair. Then we've got Curry just adding to his three-point records. When it comes to all-time three-point records with Curry, it's never been a matter of if, it's just been about when. In a game against the Bulls just over a week ago, he took down Ray Allen for the most three-pointers made of all time. Now this is between the regular season and the playoffs. Allen still holds the record for the regular season, but Curry is less than 60 away, so that should be broken pretty soon. Now, what's so crazy about this record is that Allen finished his career with 3,358 threes. Curry broke that in 585 fewer games, which obviously sounds impressive, but when you actually look at the total games, it becomes even crazier. Allen played 1,471 games to Curry's just 886, absolutely insane. And with Curry still playing at an MVP level and showing no signs of slowing down anytime soon, it's just scary to think about how big his lead is gonna be. Another big name that already has a ton of records and is just adding to that this year is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Just a couple days ago, he put together a special performance against the Orlando Magic. He scored 32 points to go along with 20 rebounds, five assists and two steals in just 30 minutes, breaking the record for the quickest 30-25 game we've ever seen. Absolutely insane. So far this year, we've seen a lot of records come close to being broken, such as LaMelo Ball against the Pacers, putting up 32 points, 11 rebounds, and 8 assists, leading his team in every category, which is impressive, but also leading every single player on the Pacers in these categories. He became just the second youngest player to do this, only trailing Luka Doncic. We've also seen a lot of records tied, such as Jalen Green, who had eight threes against the Celtics just three games into his NBA career. No teenager has ever made more. But speaking of Green and the Houston Rockets, they're on record watch for possibly the worst NBA record, no pun intended. The Rockets got their first win of the season in just their second game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Since then, they've gone on a 15-game losing streak and sit with the worst record at 1-16. While that might not be the worst start to a season, as both the 2016-76 ers and the 2010 Nets lost their first 18 games of the season, they are on pace for the worst record in history. That is currently held by the 1973-76ers for an 82-game season, as they won just 9 games. After that, you've got the Process 76ers in 2016, who won just 10 games. Now, the fewest games won in the season is actually held by the Bobcats in 2012, but that was a lockout year. They won seven games, but they only played 66. They hold the record for the lowest win percentage in a season. All of these records, the Rockets have a chance to beat. In fact, with a win percentage of 5.9%, they are on pace to finish the season with a record of five and 77, actually insane. Now, this isn't much of a surprise. This roster is filled top to bottom with unproven young guys that for the most part have been struggling individually. The only true veteran talent they have on this roster are Christian Wood, Eric Gordon, and Daniel Tice. All guys I expect to be heavily involved in trade rumors throughout the whole season. I think it's safe to say they're in full-on tank mode. 
but that isn't necessarily as rewarding as it was when teams like the Bobcats only won seven games. And that year, they didn't even land the number one pick. That went to New Orleans, they got Anthony Davis, and the Bobcats were left with Michael Kidd Gilchrist. But man, if it does work out, the Rockets get the number one pick, Jalen Green and Paolo Bonchero sounds like some must-see TV. But that's the end of you guys. You guys tell me your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.